Okay, uh, hi again, this is the next tutorial. And this is to guide you through navigating a course itself. Uh, fine, so this is a dashboard. So you successfully logged in. We've looked at the different components of the dashboard. And the next thing is the course itself. So I will use a particular course to demonstrate. And remember, there's a tile for each of the published courses. Remember, for this particular student, two courses are yet to be published. Uh, so I'll pick my course at this point and I'll click on it. And it is similar to walking into a class. Uh, now, once you walk into the class, there's already information. There's a welcome message. You can see something about online classes, my course outline, my course text, what I'm supposed to do for week one, going on down. Anyway, so let me first, uh, let's go through what you're getting to see here. Now, remember some of uh, the tools or some of the links here, some will be displayed for some courses, others will have been hidden from you. So for now, let me click on announcements. Uh, announcements uh, will list a page or the index page of the announcement will show all the announcements that are already there for the course. Like here, I have just created a small announcement welcoming students into the particular trimester and to be able to give uh, something small about uh, this particular course or what the expectations are for that course. Discussions is a very important tool, just like the inbox facility, one of the ways in which you can communicate with your lecturer and other students within the class is through discussions. Already the lecturer has posted a discussion, but for you as a student, you also have the opportunity of raising a discussion or starting a discussion that you might have other students also contribute to this. So notice I can click on this and here the lecturer is just asking the experience in information systems and uh, you can be able to give your responses. So you notice already some few responses. Let me just go back to the discussions. And as a student, you can start a discussion and uh, you can give a topic, for example, what is cloud computing? Uh, what are your experiences with the cloud computing? Maybe you just want that to be what you want people to discuss. You can allow for threaded replies. Uh, you don't want it to be a group discussion, but you want it available, let's say from today all the way to the end of the week. You just start giving people a week or five days to be able to do that. And once you're done with that, you can click on save. And uh, once you click on save, what happens is that it will be posted in the discussions index page. So you'll get to see that in addition to the lecturers, there's also one by me as a student right now. So I'll just delete that for now. So let's not uh, then we have grades. So once you have uh, been assessed, you'll get to see your grades over here. So there'll be several assessment activities. I'll talk about them in a short, in the next tutorial. So we have the assignments here. And for whatever assessment activities, you will have a due date. You'll also have the score the lecturer has given you and what it was out of. And uh, it's always important that you can always also Click on print grades to just keep a copy for yourself on the continuous assessments. Then the people. The people link is the link that shows you who your lecturer and your classmates are. So you'll notice here, if I click on the all roles, you'll notice the teacher uh, is this. And you will also have 10 students in that particular class. So we have 10 students in that class. And so all of these are the members. So remember the two main roles, this is teacher and the student. Then we have the pages. Pages are, are will be displayed for some people and others it will not. Pages are where all of these files that were uploaded by the lecturer have been created. Uh, these you'll notice are actually in the home page. I think I will also disable this from the student's view. 
Files is a container for everything that has been uploaded by the lecturer for the students viewing. So you'll notice all of these are the items that were uploaded by the lecturer for that student or for the students in that particular course. The syllabus, uh, ideally you're supposed to actually have uh, the course outline placed over here for each of the activities. This has not yet been done. Then we have quizzes. If you have any quizzes that has been set out by uh, the lecturer, you will get to see them there. But they will also fall into another category called assignments. Modules are how the logical flow of uh, learning is uh, arranged. So you'll notice that this is actually what you also get to see on the home page. So a number of lecturers will have uh, maybe the modules and the pages hidden from you and also the files so that you just get to see this content. Then you have conferences. A very important tool is when you're going to have real-time classes. Uh, notice here there was a demonstration for this particular course and uh, you can be able to click on join for you to be able to join that particular conference. So uh, Anytime there's going to be a real-time class for you, the lecturer will inform you in advance and you will get to see the listing of that conference. You'll get to see that it's in progress because the lecturer will have started it and there'll be a button called join where you can be able to now join uh, into the conference and be able to attend the class online. We have not activated Kemo right now, so that is not, uh, doesn't have to bother you for now. So I'll go back to the home page and uh, how we have created many of the lecturers will have arranged content in a way, what we call the modular format, where it guides you progressively in how your learning should be for the semester. So just for purposes of demonstration, I have a welcome message here for my students. So I'll click on that. And uh, so uh, it says click on the announcements page to start. But you'll notice that on the right side at the bottom, there's a button called next, which now takes me. So this is very similar to the way you'll turn pages within a book. So online classes. So there's something that the left students are supposed to do. So at the bottom, there's a button that takes you to the previous page or a button that takes you to the next page. Here you'll get to see the course outline. And this course outline, most probably the lecturer will have a Word document or a PDF that you can be able to click and it will download into your computer for offline reading, especially those of us who have internet connectivity issues or we're in a bit remote. Uh, places you can always download this content for you to be able to read later. You can go to the next and this takes you through. So notice again it will allow you to download the content. So most lecturers will have the content in a format that allows you to download it and be able to have it being read or have it for offline reading. Another very important uh, link is the files. Most probably the lecturer will have loaded your content into the files folder because I mentioned earlier the files link is a container for every uh, uploaded file by the lecturer. And you'll notice that any time you move uh, up, uh, you, you hover above any of the files, there will be the settings icon on the right side, which when you click will allow you to download. Now these again, as I mentioned, especially for those of you have uh, internet connectivity issues, this allows for asynchronous reading or reading where you don't have to be online in the system for you to access the content. Uh, so that is uh, about, uh, the, uh, about navigating a course. In the next tutorial, we look at the assessments and uh, the various activities, various assessment activities that a lecturer can give you as a student. Thank you.